Hey everybody, I thought today would be a good day to read blueberries for Sal. I was eating some frozen blueberries a little while ago and thinking about going outside for a walk. So this sounded like the perfect story for today. All right, let's get going. Blueberries for Sal. Look at the art. Look at this first page. It's pretty amazing, all the detail in there. Can you spy anything cool? Do you see uh, a flower pot somewhere in that picture? I see two flower pots, actually. Looks like they're pouring some blueberries into jars, doing some canning. Oh, do you see a kitten? I spy a kitten in that picture. Really cute little kitten down on the floor. What else can you spy? You could look at this all day. <clears throat> But let's get reading. The book is really good, too, the story. One day, little Sal went with her mother to Blueberry Hill to pick blueberries. Little Sal brought along her small tin pail, and her mother brought her large tin pail to put the berries in. We will take our berries home and can them, said her mother. Then we'll have some food for the winter. Little Sal picked three berries and dropped them into her little tin pail. Cup plink, cup plank, cup plunk. She picked three more berries and she ate them. Then she picked more berries and dropped one in the pail. Cup plunk. Ate and the rest of them she ate. Then little Sal ate all four blueberries out of her pail. Wait a minute. She's not going to have any to bring home. Her mother walked slowly through the bushes, picking blueberries as she went and putting them into her pail. Little Sal struggled along behind, picking blueberries and eating every single one of them. That's a big hill to climb. She must be getting a little tired and hungry. Little Sal hurried ahead and dropped a blueberry into her mother's pail. It didn't sound like kaplink because she, because the bottom of her pail was already covered with berries. It was pretty full. She reached down inside to get her berry back, though she really didn't mean to. She pulled out a large handful of blueberries. There were so many blueberries right up close to the one that she put in the pail. Her mom is not even noticing that she's taking a handful of berries out. Her mother stopped picking and said, now, Sal, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to take her berries home and can them for next winter. So that means we've got to save some of these. Her mother went back to picking, but little Sal, because her feet were tired of standing and walking, she sat down in the middle of a large clump of bushes and she just started eating blueberries. On the other side of Blueberry Hill, Little Bear came with his mother to eat some blueberries as well. Little Bear, she said, eat lots of berries and grow big and fat. We must store up food for the long, cold winter. Little Bear followed behind his mother as she walked slowly through the bushes eating berries. Little Bear stopped now and then to eat berries as well. Then he had to hustle along really fast to catch up. Every time he stopped, he got farther behind his mom. So he had to run to catch up to her. Because his feet were tired of hustling, he picked out a large clump of bushes and he sat down right in the middle and started eating blueberries. Somebody else was doing that, right? That's just what little Sal was doing. Over on the other side of the hill, little Sal ate all of the berries that she could reach from where she was sitting. Then she started out to find her mother. Oh no, where did her mom go? She stopped for a long time to eat berries. She must have, she might have lost track of her mom. She heard a noise from around a rock and thought, that is my mother walking along. Must be my mother behind this rock. But it was a mother crow and her children. They stopped eating berries and they flew away saying, caw, caw, caw. Then she heard another noise in the bushes and she thought, that is surely my mother. I will go that way. 
but it was Little Bear's mother instead. She was tramping along, eating berries, thinking about storing up food for the winter. Little Sal tramped right along behind her. Look at the bottom of that bear's foot, the paw. You can see how big it is. There goes Sal right behind the bear. By this time, Little Bear had eaten all the berries he could reach without moving from his clump of bushes. Then he hustled off to catch up with his mother. He hunted and hunted, but his mother was nowhere to be seen. He heard a noise from over a stump and thought, that must be my mother walking along. I'll go that way. See the stump on the top of the hill? I think I'd want to climb up on that stump and sit on it. It looks like a good spot to take a rest and hang out. And there he is on top. But it was a mother partridge and her children making that sound. They stopped eating berries and they hurried away. Then he heard a noise in the bushes and thought, that is surely my mother. I'll go hustle that way. But it was little Sal's mother instead. She was walking along picking berries and thinking about canning them for next winter. Little Bear hustled right along behind her. Little Bear and little Sal's mother and little Sal and little Bear's mother were all mixed up with each other along the blueberries on Blueberry Hill among the blueberries. So they were all mixed up. Wait, let me move my face here. You can see down at the bottom over here. Do you see where I'm pointing? There's little bear and little Sal's mother. And then over here on this side, it's little Sal and the bear's mother, mama bear. Their, their families are mixed up on Blueberry Hill. Little bear's mother heard Sal walking along behind and she thought it was little bear. She didn't think it was, she's like, well, there's my little bear behind me. She didn't know it was little Sal. She didn't even turn around. Eat all you can, all you can possibly hold. Keep swallowing. Little Sal said nothing. She just picked three berries and dropped them. Kaplunk, kaplink, kaplunk in her small tin pail. Just keep eating, little bear. That's what the mom was saying without looking. Boy, will she be surprised. Little Bear's mother turned around to see what on earth was making a noise that sounded like kerplunk. Goof, she cried, choking on a mouthful of berries. This is not my child. Where's Little Bear? She took one good look and backed away. She was old enough to be shy of people, even a very small person like Little Sal. Then she turned around and walked off very fast to hunt for her little bear. Oh no, she's probably really worried about little bear. Little Sal's mother heard little bear tramping along behind and thought it was little Sal. She kept right on picking and thinking about canning blueberries for next winter. Little bear padded up and peeked into her pail. Oh, look at that. Of course, he only wanted to taste a few of what was inside, but there were so many and they were so close together that he tasted a tremendous mouthful by mistake. That means a lot, put a bunch into his mouth. Now Sal, said little Sal's mother without turning around and looking, she said, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother, I want to take and can these for next winter. Little Bear tasted another tremendous mouthful and almost spilled the entire pail of blueberries onto the ground. She's pulling on the pail, it's tipping. Little Sal's mother turned around and gasped. Oh, my goodness, you are not Little Sal. Where, oh where is my child? Little Bear just sat there munching and munching and swallowing and licking his lips. Little Sal's mother slowly backed away. She was old enough to be shy of bears, even very small bears like Little Bear. Then she turned and walked away quickly to look for Little Sal. That's cute. Look at Little Bear with her tongue out. 
She hadn't gone very far before she heard ka-plink, ka-plank, ka-plunk. She knew just what makes that sound. That's little Sal in her bucket, right? Dropping berries one by one. Little Bear's mother had not hunted for very long either before she heard a hustling sound that stopped now and then to munch and swallow. She knew just what made that kind of noise too. Moms always know, don't they? When their little ones are there. Little Bear and his mother went home down one side of Blueberry Hill, eating blueberries all the way. Do you spy them? They're on one side of the top of the hill. And then on the other side is little Sal and her mom. So the bear went down one side of Blueberry Hill, the bear family eating berries all the way and full of food stored up for next winter. Little Sal and her mother went down the other side of Blueberry Hill, picking berries all the way and drove home with food to can for next winter. A whole pail of blueberries and three more besides. The end. Let's see if there's another. There they are canning again. The picture at the end is really cool. What else do you spy? This is that same kitchen uh, picture from the beginning. Let's see if there's anything interesting in this picture. I spy a clock on the wall with some numbers on it. Can I see the clock? And I spy. a pot with steam coming out of it on the stove and the cook stove some really cool pictures and a dish towel hanging up could look at this picture for a long time thank you for joining me guys that was really fun one of my favorite books some good counting in there maybe you could even have some blueberries for snack while you're reading <laughs>